Mm -hmm. You ready? I'm ready. Let's go. Uh, welcome to uh, AaronKnows.com. We are live with uh, James. Kenny, James, how are you doing today, man? I'm great, Rhett. Thanks for having me. How are you? Man, I, I'm, I'm excited to have you. I'm going to give a little bit of background of James and I's relationship. We, uh, we go back a long, long way. Uh, we actually started off, we uh, met each other waiting tables at uh, Cheddar's Restaurant in Arlington, Texas, and uh, I'm so proud of him <laughs> and all his success. And this is a heck of a lot of fun for me to get down and talk to you uh, live here. So uh, it's good to see you, man. Good to see you too, Rhett. And Cheddar's was a lot of fun. I think we <laughs> learned, we certainly learned customer service. And we learn hard work. Those are two things that we learn. And, and, and don't forget about rolling some silverware, man. I think that's we, right. A lot of that what, what was it? A hundred, a hundred and fifty before the end of the shift. <laughs> it was a lot. Well, James, you know the the purpose, and as we've talked before, the purpose of this uh, it's called Ask the Expert. Uh, this segment we, we would like to do is have people on, and we'd like to talk about uh, their special specialty and their expertise. So, can you give a little bit of back your background in public relations and marketing and sales uh, before we get started? Sure. So my background, um, I'm fortunate that I think I was uh, born a PR person. <laughs> I was someone who was very friendly in my elementary school classes, uh, junior high and high school. So I was kind of always the life of the party. So for me, PR was a very natural thing for me to do and marketing as well. Um, I think I understood how there was a story going on with a particular student and another story going on with a particular teacher, let's say or the school itself, and how those stories work together, right? right? So I think when you're thinking about someone who has a, a marketing mind or a PR mind, you have to understand how industries, people, and things work together in order to create a larger story. So I was fortunate in that sense, but my particular skills came really from my music career. I was a touring musician um, during college at Oklahoma State, and then out of college for a while. And I was essentially my own booking agent, my own manager, and my own PR rep. I mean, um, in order to get 200 kids show up to see you perform, you got to be pretty good at marketing. So I aligned myself with the fraternities and the sororities at Oklahoma State, and as well as Eskimo Joe's, which is a world-famous restaurant. And those were my two core um, Consumer groups, you know, those were my constituents that really helped me market and promote myself as an artist. Um, and then lastly, from a professional standpoint, uh, I was a marketing manager at several law firms. One of them was a, a very big law firm in Houston, Texas, where I managed uh, the marketing activities of 300 plus attorneys. Um, and then from there, I went on to work in New York on Wall Street. And now I've owned my own shop for over five years now where I've developed marketing programs and strategies for everybody from Toyota, Belkin, Dell, Estee Lauder, Microsoft, I mean, you, you name it. It's a really long list of large corporations that I've either worked with on the event side or on the marketing strategy side. Well, and that's, I think that's good, and I appreciate you going into the background. You know, some of our uh, viewers today, you know, we kind of have a wide spectrum uh, between large and small, so I think it's the, the, one of the main reasons I wanted you on because you do have that background uh, as a small company, but also working mm -hmm. with some larger companies as well. Because there's there's obviously different uh, aspects, you know, to each one of them, what their struggles are. Uh, so can you kind of give a little bit of uh, uh, guidance to somebody that's watching? Let's say they have a limited budget, and say they're just kind of delving uh, into social media, for for example. Uh, they're seeing some potential there. Uh, can you kind of give us maybe two or three key things to do with social media, you know, between Twitter and w whichever one, maybe recommend a couple to focus on to start with, because to be honest with you, sometimes it gets so overwhelming. And then, you know, kind of a couple of key do's and don'ts. So uh, wh where would you tell a small company to, to start with as far as social media so they don't get, get overwhelmed? Well, I really, to be honest, I really like what you are doing, Rhett. There's something in the marketing world that we call the content publisher model. And uh, I'm just going to say that again so everyone can really understand it. Content publisher. And what a content publisher means is that you as a company and, and a business and or an individual is taking it upon yourself to publish content. So here's something that a lot of people don't really know and understand. Media, essentially, meaning communication, only happens in three ways. It's either earned owned or paid. 
most people really only think about the paid portion of media, which is advertising, right? Yeah. But a lot of people can't afford it, especially on a small business level. You can't start with a million dollar a year ad budget, right? So you're left with two things, earned media and owned. Earned is going to be public relations. So earned means that you can write a blog, which there's lots of great blogging platforms like WordPress or Tumblr or Blogspot, which is owned by Google. So you can build a blog, start to communicate that way. Blogging works really great for SEO because you have tags in the blog so that when someone searches small business Amarillo, Texas, if you're tagging that and you're writing about that in your blog, it'll help consumers find you. So if you had an auto parts store, right, oil and gas services in West Texas in Midland, Odessa area, you could always type in Midland, Odessa oil field services on every single one of your blogs and that would help businesses find you on the internet. Uh, but so, so, so that is the, the earned side or the PR side. And now we're going to get back to what you're doing, which is owned media. So in owned media, you take it upon yourself to create this amazing website, congratulations, Air In Knows, which is an opportunity for everyone in the air parts and compressor industry, air compressor industry to come together collectively, which is a genius idea and a way to make the industry and consumers wrap around you. But then you have something like this Ask the Expert show. Where right now, as you and I are talking, we are creating content that somebody 13 to 30 to 60 years old can watch on their smartphone, their computer, or via any platform, Facebook, Twitter, or any, any really platform that exists on the internet. So it, I, I hope that answers the questions. For small businesses, you want to stick to earned and owned. You know, and I think that's actually a really good point, and, uh, and, and that makes sense because you do – Anytime you talk about advertising, like oh, and I do it because I'm CPA, right? I don't want to spend any money. So like, oh my God, right. that's going to cost us arm and leg. Are we going to see any return or anything like that? But I think you brought up a really good point on the earn side, where you can, yeah, it will cost you some time, but you can benefit uh, from that type of advertising, especially the way it is now. Uh, so I think that's a great point. So you don't always have to just cut a check for X amount, you know, to to do some advertising, especially the way. No, it is. but. Yeah, so here's the rule. If you're not going to spend the money, you're going to spend the time. Right. You, you, but you have to you got to spend one. Well, yeah, I mean and, and that just makes sense. I mean, and I and I I'll be honest, I've been guilty of that. You're like, "Man, I want mm -hmm. all the exposure, but I don't want to do anything to earn it." So, uh I think that's a great point. And I, I think that's mm -hmm. a, a good way to look at it from a uh from a uh cost benefit relationship. Maybe you spend some time, but especially now, it seems like you can reach uh, so many people. So, Okay, so on the social media side, now we have uh, we were just in a show last week in San Antonio, and I was talking to several uh, small business owners, and we were talking about uh, we we're talking about Twitter, you know, and that's that's something that we we're talking about. And I I'll be honest with you, I kind of blew off Twitter uh, from the pros co standpoint uh, because it was so industrial related. And I didn't think there would really be much uh, use for that, but there does seem to be the more and more we get out there, obviously the more and more exposure you can get. So. Give us uh, just a, a quick synopsis of a place to start on the social media side, like blogging, for example. I think it's a great point because it doesn't have to necessarily be Twitter. So maybe maybe it's more the blog side. But give me give me two places to start, so somebody that's not so computer savvy doesn't just get overwhelmed. Well, there's your two obvious usual suspects, which are going to be Facebook and Twitter. Right. Facebook is the largest online community on the planet. And then Twitter is the largest microblogging place on the planet. So microblogging just means that Twitter is an opportunity to deliver a small message to a lot of people frequently. Right. The, game, the game in Twitter, Twitter is highly engaging, and that's why it blew up so fast, is because you really ha have the opportunity to thank a lot of people, say hello to a lot of people, and deliver 15 to 20 messages a day if you had that much time or an agency or a firm working on your behalf. But the ultimate power of Twitter is that you really have a direct opportunity to speak directly to a decision maker, uh, a influencer or someone within that company. For example, yesterday I was on the phone with 
direct TV and just a horrible experience of spending six, seven weeks trying to get a refund for something that they, they never should have billed me for. I finally told the lady, hey, I've got 6,000 plus followers on Twitter. And if you guys keep yanking my chain, I'm going to go all over Twitter and I'm yeah. going to tell people how horrible direct TV is. <laughs> and honestly, I, I got her attention because I said, if you keep doing this to me, I'm going to blast you all over Twitter, <laughs> right? And say direct TV sucks. And I'm going to start a hashtag DTV sucks. And that's, that scares them. Right. It, if, if that gets picked up by CNN, it's a problem. So anyway, to answer your question, Facebook and Twitter are a great place to start. Uh, so Facebook, it, Facebook and Twitter are also very tough, though, because everybody is on Facebook and Twitter. So you got to realize that either you're jumping into a red ocean or a blue ocean. A blue ocean, there's more opportunity. A red ocean, you can compete, but there's a lot of competition there. So... <clears throat> What I suggest for the clients that we're working with now that are getting into Facebook and Twitter is you have to use what we call social segmentation. So social segmentation within Facebook and Twitter means that you are speaking directly to a niche audience. So you're not just saying, so for example, on Facebook or Twitter, you wouldn't say, have a great day, everybody in the whole wide world, 7 billion people. It's not going to reach anybody. But for someone like you, Rhett, who's a CPA and CEO, you can speak directly to your industry about inside information that only they know. And that's how you develop a highly engaged audience within Facebook and Twitter. Using the hashtags and using and tweeting directly at somebody and followers and things like that, correct? Yeah, for example, so like what uh, we were talking about the other week when you and I were on the phone, um, you know, you would go and follow people like Ingersoll Rand right. because Ingersoll Rand is not so used to being engaged with on Twitter. So for you on Twitter, there may only be two, three, four thousand people in the world. But it sh success on Twitter or Facebook should not be measured by 700,000 likes or 700,000 followers. It should be measured by your engagement. So if there's 4,000 people in the world that are in your specific industry and, and all 4,000 of those people follow you and you follow them and there's engagement happening, that's success. That's a, you know, that's a good point. And I, and I think that's probably a good way to, uh, to look at that because how do you define success through social media? Is it through right. sales? Is it through whatever? Everybody, it always comes back to sales, but that exposure that you get, it, you can't really calculate that to, to some degree, right? So here's your two metrics that I recommend for every client. Engagement rate and conversion rate. Who cares how many likes you have? Who cares how many followers you have? So, Rhett, let me ask you this question as a CEO and a CPA. If you had 100 likes and 100 followers on Facebook and Twitter, but 50 of those people or spending $10,000 each with you, right? right. And th so you're at a 50% conversion rate. Right. Or you had 1,000 likes and 1,000 followers, but only 1% of those people were spending $10,000. Which, which would you want? <laughs> well, the first one, yeah. yeah. Exactly. So, so, yeah. Exactly. So it's engagement rate. So engagement rate is going to mean brand recognition. Are people talking about you? Is your social currency that's happening, right? Th that's your engagement rate, which is important. And the reason why that is is because it's word of mouth. Right. If your engagement rate's high, oh, so-and-so over at so-and-so. Oh, you know Rhett over at so-and-so. So Yeah, if you're, if you're ever in Lubbock, make sure to talk to Rhett. Da -da 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 -da. That's your social currency from the engagement rate. But then conversion rate, <clears throat> people that are actually buying things, that's very important. You know, it's fascinating. And I always tell people, and you're, you know, we're, we're pretty similar in age, and, and we talked about it last week on your show. Uh, I always feel like we're kind of on the, uh, the, high, the, the uh, transition generation or whatever, because you, when you and I went to school, uh, my first email account I got when I was a freshman here at Tech. And mm -hmm. uh, to think about where, you know, and, and I'm assuming business schools today are teaching a lot on social media and all this kind of stuff because, I mean, the cost savings, if you want to look at it just from a pure standpoint, I mean, the cost savings can be incredible if you do it right. So mm -hmm. talk, speak to that a little bit. Like, what have you seen change in your time 
from where you started Oklahoma State and you started doing it, what would you have done now? That, that might be a good thing to look at. What would you have done today with your music business? You know, you had, you'd had, you talked about having fraternities and sororities and you had Eskimo Joes. You know, would, would you have had a lot more exposure at that time if you had, it's kind of a stupid question, but, you know, your, your exposure could have been so much more even at that time. Am I right in that, how much it's changed? Yeah, you know, I, I have a very interesting formula on success, and it's pretty simple. 50% of it you're born with, right? 30% of it is what I call getting in the woodshed, right? You're chopping wood, chopping wood, ch- chopping wood. And you have to work at, at that 30 Um, the next 10 is basically who, you know, right. And then the last 10, I think it's just luck. It's the right time. It's the right place. So when you look at a guy like Bill Gates, if he was in Mobile, Alabama, I don't think it would have happened. Right. If he was in Florida, I don't think it would have happened. He was in the right place. I mean, the 50% he was born with, he was super smart, right? Oh yeah. But all the other things had to check out. Right. So to go back to your to your your question, if I would have came out of Oklahoma State in um, 2000, uh, 2010, oh, it would have been completely different yeah. because I because I would have been able to put out music on the internet. Yeah. I would have been able to put out blogs. Uh, all the students would have been filming me perform on their smartphones, right. and that would have went viral. So. When my band and I did 2,000 shows, there wasn't the ability for the audience to instantly film us and make us viral. Right. It's fascinating. It really is fascinating. I was talking to uh, uh, our salesman here uh, who's a little bit older mm-hmm. than I am, and, you know, and we were talking about Twitter and some of this stuff, and, it, it, and you and I get, like I said before, I think we're in transition because he, you know, there's a benefit to being face-to-face, and there really is, but mm-hmm. there's also a benefit of being efficient you know, and shooting emails and things like that. So if we can combine the two, you know, which mm-hmm. is what I, things like this and other things that we're trying to do, you know, if you can combine those two, you could be really, really successful because I don't think you can get away completely from the face-to-face, but could you do it through Skype? Could you do it through uh, go to meeting and things like that? So there's, there's all this technology out there. Yeah. I think, you know, join.me go to meeting is, is doing really well. And I think for example, like this Skype experience is different than a phone call. Right. It is because you can see, you know, the, the eyes aren't real time per se, right. but the voice is real time and, it, and it's, it's really close. I think that when you look at going green and you look at saving money on travel, air, sure. uh, it's, a, it's a great way to engage with a potential customer or a colleague without hopping on a plane. Well, and that's why, you know, and I, I don't want to get too much off. That's why we're excited about this because you can do the split screen. Um, you know, just yeah, a, it's cool. Just a couple of, give me. Before we let you go, give me two uh, pitfalls that a small business can avoid in their marketing plan and their sales plan. What are what are two things you see a lot that you're like, man, if if I could tell anybody one thing or two things, don't do this. You know, is there anything out there like that that they could just try to avoid? Um, yeah, making grammar mistakes. Okay. Grammar and or style mistakes, I think, are a big thing. It just makes your business look really bad. And, 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 and the golden rule is basically what we call the three C's, creative, consistent, content. That's it, creative, consistent, content. Because what's happened is as Facebook and Twitter and all of the internet as a whole has evolved, video is the king of internet. People don't really want to read a lot more, they, they would just want to watch a video. Or they'll look at a photo. So at this point, it's a highly visual and audio medium. So if you're writing this long, oh, just wanted to tell you guys about a special that we have today. It's only fifteen ninety nine. If you stop by on Tuesday after five, we can do this for you, and it's really special. We're really excited about it. And stop by because uh, Tammy's in the shop, and we're really excited to see you. Yeah. Right. So that's like eight nine lines yeah. of that. So the same person could hop on the smartphone and make sure to shoot it 1920 by 1080 meaning that don't shoot it like uh don't shoot it like this shoot it like this okay so that it shows up right right so shoot it 1920 by 1080 but the same thing could be they could hop on and say 
the two CSR reps or whoever could film a short video and be like, hi, this is Tammy and Susie. We're down at da 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 Make sure to stop by and see us today because this is only $15.99. And if you stop by, I'll give you a hug. <laughs> Bye. Right? So that 10-second stupid silly video, the, I, I guarantee you, and this is a complete hypothetical situation, the engagement on scenario number two would be through the roof. Yeah. Versus it's like eight or nine sentences. You know, and that's but. even on the and so okay. So I'm about to I'm about to bring this back into the industrial side because a lot of people in this industry, it's so you know for lack of a better word, it's boring. We we we've kind of coined the term the the fourth utility expense. Nobody thinks about it, right? However, there's service trucks. There's people out there engaging. I mean, there's there's customer service going on all the time. So from an industrial side, you get that exact same scenario could easily play out with one of your service trucks or somebody that, you know, hey, uh, get somebody like what you're talking about, give a hug to one of the service techs, you know. So instead of writing up a, a massive uh, mailer even, you know, that describes your service job, you could have one Vine video or whatever, or even on Twitter that just had some girl hugging your service tech. This this is Billy. He'll do you the best job ever, you know, or something like that. So as this industry grows more social, I, I think that's a great scenario. So you can't – Well, see- yeah, and it- – Go ahead, go ahead. Well, I was going to say, you know, I challenge that the industry is not boring, well, right? I mean, if, if, if you look at what's on um, Nat Geo and History Channel, a lot of these shows, you've got like big burly men that are out digging ditches. And somehow, some way on TV, digging ditches or digging for gold has become super cool, right, on, on all these shows. So, for example, you could have guys getting in trucks um, – I, I, I would say your industry, you know, air compression is exciting. You know, if you film the machines doing what they do and you film people out in the field and you film problems being solved, that's cool. Right. Well, but it's just got to be filmed. And you bring, and I'm sorry to cut, but you bring up a, a heck of a point because you're right. I mm-hmm. mean, this industry has a ton going for it that, and nobody knows. So its reputation is boring. And that's, that's one of the things we're trying to shift. <laughs> to get some mm-hmm. exposure out there. So instead of being a mechanic and it's all, and it kind of comes back to public relations, right? I mean, instead of, instead of seeing it as a boring industry, which is what I just said, you're right. I mean, that kind of content and that kind of stuff coming up, if we can, if we can have things like that on Skype and have things, you know, talking about this industry, it is a great industry and that you're right. Yeah. And if you look at someone like a Mike Rowe, right. Who, who made dirty jobs seem cool. Right. So it takes someone who's going to have enthusiasm. Yeah. Right. So uh, that, that can position it the right way. Like, I guarantee you, if I came to Lubbock, I could make air compression sexy. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Just from yeah. just from having the Hey, guys, take a look at this today. We're going to the inside of this massive compression machine. This thing is 15 million dollars on the market. I bet you didn't know that, did you? Yeah. OK, come on, let's go. I mean, it, yeah. it, so you as a marketer have to have enough savvy to have enthusiasm. So that's number two I'm going to give you on the bad mistakes okay. for, sm- for sm- small to medium-sized um, businesses. Make sure that you have enthusiasm in, in what you're selling. If you don't have any enthusiasm for what you're selling, then who else is going to? No, that's great. And, that's what, and I think that's why I'm, I'm hoping that uh, this video specifically gets uh, – we can get it out there and get a lot of people, you know, viewing it and interacting with it. Cause I agree with you a hundred percent. I think this is a great industry. And we said in the opening video, this is a great industry with great people. Nobody yeah. knows about it yet in the general public. And that's, and that's what we're trying to, that's what we're trying to change. So, I, you know, yeah, so I mean, it's, go ahead, go ahead. I say it's a very important part of the con- economy. It's a huge part of the economy. Um, I would just say this for anybody who's in the air compression industry, Play friendly in the sandbox. Own what you do best. And as long as you do that, then you're great. Digital marketing and social media is absolutely viable, an important part of your business. Engagement and conversion. That's it. Engagement. And I think that's great. And and I'll I'll let you get because I know you're I know you got a lot going on. So you know, to kind of summarize the two biggest mistakes, you know, grammar and style matter. And then be excited about what you're doing. And, yeah. You know, and yeah. I wanted this. I specifically wanted this interview, so I, I, I appreciate it. Is to you know help people understand that 
uh, the social media side doesn't have to be uh, so overwhelming to the point where you just blow it off. And I, and I think that's what we have a lot of people doing. I did it, so I know people do it. They, if you're not really computer savvy, you just get lost in the minutia of it, or it's so overwhelming you don't even. Yeah, start. tech anxiety, right? Yeah, absolutely, and it's and that's real, you know. And and I think if uh, if people can see some of this and they can see how easy it is, and how easy it is to interact. And, and to your point, which I thought was a great example, you know, the how uh, a fun video can even work in something like the industrial market. And as a matter of fact, you could take it to the next level, you know, as far as being excited about what you're doing. So some of that uh, out. Yeah. Uh, so, James, it's always good having the show. We want to have you back at some point. Um, tell, tell me your website and tell me where people can go if they want to. Uh, learn more about you and learn more about what you can do for their company because you do work with a lot of small businesses. So tell me, just give me a brief little sales pitch on that. Thank you, Red. So you guys can find me. Uh, my Twitter handle is at James N. Kinney, uh, N as in Nick. So James N. Kinney on Twitter. Uh, you can also visit jamesnkinney.com for more information uh, or my marketing firm, kinneygroupcreative.com. Uh, we work specifically with small and medium-sized businesses, and we've developed fantastic strategies for very little amounts of money. Uh, so make sure to reach out to us, and happy to talk to you for free consultation anytime. Hey, thanks, James. Look, Thank you, Rhett. Really thanks for the post call. Thank you, Aaron. Thank you. Bye-bye.